When the tyrant known as Kang the Conqueror first appeared in the pages of Marvel Comics, nobody could have predicted not only how integral he would prove to be in the Marvel Universe, but also just how many versions and variants of this character would come to exist. The multiversal plague that is Nathaniel Richards has endless variants and continues to be the scorn of existence itself. But who exactly was the original Nathaniel Richards, who was, in a sense, the first Kang? who is the first version of Kang to jump into the multiverse and begin his conquest. Well, today, watchers of the Marvel Multiverse, let's discuss the life of all of the various identities of the Prime Kang, who is generally believed to be the core version of the character, though this is somewhat of a loose definition. Prime Kang is based on the original depiction of the character when he first debuted in September of 1964, and is the version who spawns the most variants rather than being a variant himself. On Earth-6311, the individual who would come to be known as Kang is known as a Nexus being, meaning that he is a pillar of his reality and has the ability to alter the course of the timeline with his very existence. All variants that came from this timeline spawn from him, but he himself will never branch away from the 6311 universe and become a variant by using any form of a time machine. In his universe, the Earth never went into the Dark Ages, and the era plagued by destruction and darkness for us was instead a time of technological prosperity for Kang's home universe. Science and medicine made incredible advances, and this set the course of humanity and set them up for success for decades in an era of unbridled peace, thanks to a being known as the Benefactor, an interdimensional being who was able to usher in this age of grace. The Benefactor, also known by the name Nathaniel Richards, was not a variant of the same individual. He was actually a father of one of Earth-616's most beloved explorers and heroes. It would later be revealed that Kang himself was a distant descendant of Reed Richards, Mr. Fantastic himself, and he was actually named after the benefactor, Reed's father, though at this point this information was unbeknownst to the individual who would later become known as Kang. The Nathaniel Richards of Earth-6311 was a brilliant scientist born in the distant future and was a cornerstone of the academic and scientific community. In this peaceful age, society was largely devoid of major conflict, as they had learned to live in harmony with one another in an era of absolute peace. However, in this era of peace, Nathaniel Richards grew exceedingly bored. During the life of Prime Kang, he came across the ruins of a broken time machine and set out to fix the damaged ship. Upon being able to get the time machine working again, he traveled to Earth-616, home of the legendary benefactor, and here landed at the height of the Egyptian Empire. From here, he was able to use the technology he had with him to make a name for himself in Egypt, conquering entire armies with advanced weaponry that the natives simply could not contend with, or even comprehend and he was quickly able to rise through the ranks of Egyptian society. Eventually, he was named their pharaoh, and assumed the name of Rama Tut, who can actually be seen in the post credit scene of Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. This identity of Rama Tut became an identity that not only Prime King would use several times throughout his life, but other variants of himself were free to come across this time period, and assume this title as well and Rama Tut soon became one of Kang's preeminent identities. Kang lived in Egypt for years before a time-traveling escapade sent the Fantastic Four back in time and put them in direct conflict with Rama Tut. The team was able to discover that Kang did not belong in this time period, and they quickly exposed him as a fraud, ousting him from his throne and sending him fleeing back to the future. It was his original intention to return to this home reality, but he got caught up in a time storm, resulting in his crash landing of the future of Earth-616. Here, he came into contact with the Leviathan monarch, Doctor Doom, and soon after, adopted his second identity. Using the technology of the 20th century, he adopted the new identity of the Scarlet Centurion, and sought to defeat the Avengers by traveling back to their very early days. However, there were big consequences here, as this caused a splinter timeline to be created, and this would be known as Earth-689. It was here where Kang would use a weapon that would threaten every superhero in existence, an item known as the Ultra Doid Ray. He became an incredibly manipulative monarch who was able to convince the Avengers that their existence would lead to the ultimate downfall of humanity, and they systematically began arresting all superhumans. With the help of this device, King was able to mold the Avengers into his own puppets and command them at his will. After pitting the Avengers of Earth-689 against their 616 counterparts, King sought to return to his Rama Tut identity, attempting to flee back to it following his defeat. But by accident again, he was relocated to the war-torn 40th century 
century due to the faulty mechanics of his time machine. It was here where Kang saw a world ravaged by war, where barbarians fought each other with primitive technology, making this century virtually indistinguishable from the Stone Age. The only difference is that they fought with technology that they didn't understand, which remained after the collapse of the Old War. Using his Rama Tut disguise yet again, he was able to conquer these people, and after rising to the throne in this new era, he finally adopted his most notorious and well-known identity, Kang, the Interdimensional Conqueror. He began with this age, conquering not just the Earth, but branching into the wider galaxy, and conquering multiple civilizations, making the 14th century a comfortable home for the Conqueror but his mind remained locked on the Age of Heroes, against which he still held a great grudge. In addition to this, he had heard legends of the Celestial known as Madonna, which existed at some point during the Age of Heroes. Though the historical records were incomplete that Kang had, it was said that she sired the most powerful being in all of existence, and Kang set his sights on ensuring that he became this individual's father, and thus began a new era of Kang. From here, he would adopt several other identities, including the likes of Immortus, Mr. Griffin, and Victor Timely, each with their own identities and variants from across the multiverse. Following this point in his life, the splinters in his lives and the altering branching timelines led to a much more complicated and varied depiction of the character, but this version is the core of all of the variants, this prime Kang from the comics. This primary individual is commonly stated to be the main iteration of the character, and it is from this life that most of his variants spawn and grow into their own individuals and realities. While the timelines only get more complicated from here, this baseline serves as the most common origin story for Kang the Conqueror, and divergences can more often than not be traced back to this life that this Kang once led. But anyway, my friends and watchers, what do you think of the story of Prime Kang? Where do you think he is currently in the MCU? Do you think Warrior Kang was the primary iteration of this individual, or has he still gone unnoticed? As always, my friends, thank you so much for watching and continuing to support the channel. Smash that subscribe button to assemble and join our team, and I hope that you're having a great day.